Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool, and in this video we're going to have a look at one of my favourite add-ons, Construction Lines, and some updates that are coming to this add-on. So Dan over at Construction Lines was kind enough to send me out the version of this that he's working on, and I just wanted to share with you some of the funky things that are coming to this. One, to get your thoughts and feelings on this, and if you like where this is going, but also because a lot of these add-ons as they get updated and go from beta to general use, have a tendency to go up in price so this might be your chance to grab this if you haven't already a little bit cheaper so i've got this newer version of construction lines already installed and you can see the symbol for construction lines there so i can either click on that or press alt and tilde to go into this and i'm just going to start by sort of showing some of the things that this already does i have shown this in a previous video but it will link into the one of the things that construction lines can do now so if you don't know already construction lines basically gives you something that's very similar to cad so for example, you can set things up to be particular sizes. I might, for example, type in three and hit enter, and that's gonna be exactly three wide, and then, I don't know, somewhere like 1.5. What I'm gonna do is press control and then scroll up so I get like 32 segments, so it's nice and smooth. Type 1.5 and hit enter, and I've got that arc, and you can just carry on with this. So I'm gonna do exactly the same thing there. So three and then 1.5, and we've got that. The other thing that we can do with this, because it uses sort of CAD type technology. So if I go to move, from this point I can do something like press A and then let's go into move. You can just click G, it's got all the shortcuts there. So I'm gonna select that. So I just get this so it goes over the top and snaps. Oops, let's get to the point where I can see this. So I'm selecting there and I'm gonna press control so that I'm moving it along and let's snap that to that point there and we've got our object. Now. What this should do, if I just go into select mode and shift escape out of this, is if I select this, you'll notice that this has automatically merged these vertices together. So you haven't got the problem if you were copying this in any other way, that this wouldn't have merged. So it's really nice on that front and the snapping is really helpful. I'm just gonna alt and tilde back into this and I'm just gonna draw a line coming from there. And again, it will snap to that point. So this is all gonna be connected and merged together. And it will also snap as well to axes. For example, this has gone green because it's in the Y axis. I could do the same with red for the X axis and and I could do something, for example, in the Z axis as well, or you can just hit Z and it then goes in that direction. So I'm just gonna do this coming out in the Y axis just for what we want and then escape and we've got that there. So that's something I did show that construction lines could do before, but I just wanted to mention this just in case it's the first time you're seeing it and it was something that I needed to set up for what I wanted to demonstrate. Then shift and escape, and then I'm just gonna A, E, and then Z to extrude that up and we can see this has made this really nice curved shape with these exact distances that we wanted. And let's be clear, if you were trying to make this in Blender, this would be an absolute pain in the ass if you were to do it without this, and you'd never get such a smooth result. Well, I mean, you could do, but it would take you forever. So I'm just gonna tab out into object mode and let's add a solidify modifier to this. Let's increase that. And you can see we've got no problems here where that snapping occurred because it automatically merged those vertices. I'm just gonna apply that. And we'll talk about the other thing that it can do. Now, again, I have mentioned this previously, but it was in a short. So Alt and tilde to get into this tab so that we're in edit mode. And the other thing that we can do with construction lines is we can draw directly onto a mesh. So if I get a rectangle here, I can literally just go to this face and start drawing on it, let's say somewhere there, and it will snap to edges if we want. I don't want it to snap to edges. Click and it will automatically make that face on the face and in the lines that we need so that it works in Blender because we have to have it connected to the outer edges and we've got that good to go already. So really, really nice. I will say, uh, I don't know much about this, but Dan says he has been doing some work under the hood to make all of this even more efficient. So it is a little bit faster as well. And then the other thing we're gonna look at is the extrude tool. And again, this is something that it did before, but we've now added some sort of simplifications in color of how this shows. So if I click here, this is now gonna extrude and we can see it's gonna extrude and we can do specific amounts. Again, I can type in an amount and it will extrude it out or I can extrude it into the object. So for example, I could type in 0.1. You can see this going in in the top left-hand corner. Hit enter and it's extruded 0.1 in, which is cool. I'm just gonna undo that because I wanna show you the other thing that this does. If I click and start to extrude in, if I go too far, now it color codes it in red, which is really cool. So you can see when you're going all the way through, but, and this is the really big but, if you then click, 
it will still work out that it's gone through the other side and not cause any errors. And I haven't seen much that does this in Blender without it causing those problems. And I think that's really, really powerful. If I just control Z and undo that, I'll show you something else, which I think is really funky. And that is this, this won't just work it out in one aspect. If I go back to extrude again and click here, it will also, if I go all the way through this, all the way to the other side, it will do it for every single bit of it. So we've got this cool window going all the way through. I just, the power of that is incredible. It just really, really impresses me that we can do that. And let's just double check this. I'm gonna shift and escape to come out of it. And then let's N, and then we'll go into 3D print toolbox and let's check all, and we've got no 3D printing problems. So yeah, love that. It did always do that but now I just think that color coding for what it's doing is really nice where it shows you if you're going through the other side in red. So lots of fun there. Right, let's delete that and talk about the other thing. And this is something that again, it did before, but now, oh my God, has this got better, like so much better. I'm gonna go into cube. I'm just gonna set this up. So I'm gonna be making some sort of little fort. Okay, so I'm gonna S on everything but the Z axis. And then let's go into face mode, select that face, that face, I to inset it. Control and E, bridge edge loops, and then we'll come into edge mode. Control and R there, and let's drag that somewhere about there. And this is gonna be our fort sort of outline. I'm gonna come up here and turn wireframe on just so everything's easier to see. And this really helps with construction lines. Then I'm gonna shift an A mesh and bring in a cube. And I want this cube to be basically the sort of bits where you're gonna have a raised turret on it. So let's G that sort of over to there. Is that about the right size? Probably, let's S and Z and then Control and A and apply the scale. And we'll do the standard construction lines thing, so Alt and tilde, and what's great about this is we can nice and easily snap that to there and we know it's perfectly on that corner. Lovely. And again, in the previous version of construction lines and the previous tutorial, I told you that what's fantastic about this is you can basically use something that was very common in SketchUp, which is if I want to move this, I can come to that corner here, click, press control, and it's now making a copy, and I can obviously snap this to that corner there. And what's really fun about this is that you can do things like press divide by three, and you'll notice you see this in the top left-hand corner, hit enter, and it will perfectly break this up into three equal spaced parts. So we've now got a total of four. So good so quick and obviously you can do this with an array in blender but the time taken to get this exactly to the same point like exactly on that corner so this width here is exactly the same as the width there you're not going to do that with an array at least not easily and what's good about this is again if we were trying to array this you'd end up with lots of ones in the middle whereas here i can just select that one and then move from that corner snapping Again, press control, come over here, and we could divide by three. We can also, I'll just mention this, press multiply by three, and it will do it the opposite way, so now that it's going forward. So we can do that. But there was a problem with this, in that this isn't an array. If I, let's shift and escape to come out of construction lines. If I, nope, that one, did something like bevel these, I'm gonna have to do this for every single one. And if I've got, well, four on each side, that's gonna be really tedious. So here's the big update, guys. Let's Alt and Tilde back into construction lines, select this one, and we're gonna do exactly the same thing. So I'm going to select this corner and I'm gonna move it, except for this time, instead of pressing Control, I'm gonna press Alt. And what that means is that if I now come over here, do exactly the same thing, divide by three, and let's say I want to do it for this one again, select, select there, and then again, come to that edge, Alt, and then we've got that over here, and divide by three. Now, because I pressed Alt instead of Control, if I shift and escape, if I come into any of these, and it does mean any of them, you don't have to fiddle around being like, which is the one that I used first? You can just Control and B, and it will edit every single one of them. Okay, so I did that on that one, but so I'm now looking at this one over here, and I'm like, oh, actually, I want to edit something in. Control and R there, Control and B, and then let's use box cutter to Q, E, and macro, and do that there. Oh, look, it's worked for every single one of them.
I mean, that's some really powerful stuff to be able to do. I mean, we can always, you can link objects together in Blender as standard, that's nothing new. But in combination with this function here that's like an array, that's really something. Now, the other reason this becomes more powerful than a array, if I just, let's come here, and let's put those in place, and then let's scale that down. I'm just going to set up something that's like a bit like a turret. So let's scale that down there and maybe actually scale that up on everything but the Z. And then let's extrude that out, scale that down, and then let's what do I want to do next? Let's apply the scale, select that edge loop, control and B. Let's bevel that so it's a little nicer. Okay, so let's say we've got our turret there. Or we'd probably better add something in there. So let's eye that in there. Let's select those larger edges. Control E and then let's subdivide those. And then if we just select no, that one there. Why are you being a pain? Let's go to there, 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 and there. And then we can N, edit, and then circle. And then let's S that to there, and then we've got our circle, so that works well, and then we can E that down, and then I'm going to put Shift and S as where the object origin is, so that we can rotate things around nice and easily. Okay, so let's G and Z that down, and we've got that as our turret. There we go, nice turret. So we can probably do without being in wireframe now, so let's get rid of that. But we've got our turret here, and then we want to make copies of this, again, on each one of these. She do you want to scale that up a bit? Maybe. Let's go with there. And apply the scale. So what we're going to do is, once again, Alt and tilde, and then I want to select this object, and then we're going to move it. And what's great about this is I can move it in relation to something else. So I'm going to go to the corner of this actual sort of mount bit. So I want to click there, and it's making the copy. Press Alt, so I've got that. Move it to the snap on the other corner of the one on the end. Divide by three, and we've got three of those, and then let's do the same thing back here. So move from that corner, Alt, to this corner. Divide by three, and we've got loads of those. And because they're linked, but they're not an array, if I shift and escape, and let's just start moving these around, I'm going to R and Z these on each one, so we're rotating these on the Z axis. We can do this. If this was arrays, we would have to be applying the array each time so that we can do this. But no, not with this. We can move them all individually, so we can have them all pointing in separate directions. And once you've done that, you can, well, just edit anything as you want. Um, let's put a barrel in this, so what's going to be the easiest way to do this? Let's select that. Again, probably the same thing as we did with the other one. So Shift and S, subdivide. And then we can I to insert those. S and Y and then N. And then use our loop tools again by pressing the circle button. And then let's just scale that down to there. So really useful set of tools there. And then we can E that out. Let's scale that in. E. So somewhere like that. And face mode, I. And then E that back. And then what else do we want to do? Let's just add a little bit of detailing. So Control and R there, Control and B there, bring that down. And then we'll just add in our tiny little bit of detailing. And then let's select those edges there and there, actually. And let's scale those out a little bit. So we've got our gun barrel. And now it's done that to every single one of them. So, I don't know about you, but to me that just seems fantastic. They're all pointing in different directions, but you can edit any of them and you can fiddle around with whatever one you want and then it will do it to all of the other ones. So, you don't have to worry about which one you're fiddling with. Yeah, I can't say that the price is going to be going up for construction lines. I don't know that. That's not a fact. But I would say, if you're interested in this, grab it now because really this is just absolutely brilliant. And I have to say, of all of the add-ons that I use, there's very few people that are as helpful as Dan has been in terms of giving me some tips and pointers and responding to community feedback. So as far as I'm concerned, he really deserves that support. As always, if you found this useful, do hit the like button. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And if you're interested in supporting the channel further, 
do head over to the Patreon where you get lots of other perks, these videos a week ahead of time and ad free. Have a great day guys.